In this tutorial, we're going to create a custom login page, a custom registration page, and an edit profile page so users don't have to use the WordPress user profiles that are created for them by default. And we're going to do this all with a free plugin. There are premium add-ons to this plugin, but we don't need them for anything we're doing today. If you have any questions throughout this tutorial, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to answer them as best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And this video is getting started right now. In this tutorial, we're gonna create custom login pages and registration pages, as you expected, based on the title and the intro. And what this actually means is when someone clicks on a login link on your website, it will go to not the WordPress login, but a customized login that we design using Elementor and some short codes provided by a free plugin called Profile Builder. And the same thing for the registration page, we'll click on there, and this will be a custom registration page, custom design that fits in with our brand, which is pretty awesome. To get started with that, I'm using Elementor currently. That's what this page template is, it's an Elementor page. That's not required to make this work. I'm using Astra as the theme, and I use Astra plus the customizer to create and customize this menu system up here, also not required. All that's really required is having a link or button someone clicks to log in and register, and then the Profile Builder plugin, and then something to customize the design. In this case, we're using Elementor. You can use Divi, you could use Beaver Builder, any builder that accepts shortcodes. So let's install this Profile Builder plugin first. Let's go to Plugins and then Add New. Let's look up Profile Builder. There are a number of plugins that do very similar things. I've used Profile Builder in the past. I like it, it works, got a lot of installs, got a lot of great reviews. Choose a different one if you want to. They all do similar things, but they probably come at it a lot differently. But I like this one. And before you install a plugin, if you're installing this on an active production site, make sure you back up your site first. If you don't know how to do that, I've created a video on how to back up sites. Click the card up above with the link in the description down below to check that out. And the reason we do it is just in case something goes wrong. It's rare these days if something goes wrong when you install a new plugin, but you never know. It's better to have a backup and be safe. Click on install now when you're ready and then activate. Now we're brought to our basic information page. If you're installing this plugin for the first time, this button will say create pages or something similar. I did a dry run on this video earlier, and so I had them installed already, and so this says now view form pages instead of create form pages. But either way, you click on this blue button, and that will create the login form page, the registration form page, and the edit profile form page, which we can then customize using a page builder. Or, alternately, you can just copy and paste these short codes. You don't have to create the pages by clicking the button. You can copy and paste the short codes wherever you want them to exist, and have them right there. We also have the ability to enable extra features down below. We can have a recover password page. We can have admin approval, email confirmation, and all these you can read. You can read through those, click on this button to enable them. And down below, we have pro options for this plugin. We're not gonna touch on any of these because we don't need them for what we're doing here. So before we look at these pages and start customizing them, let's look at the settings of this plugin. Go to the settings on the left, and we have a lot of options. We're not gonna go through every single one. They are explained quite well in the descriptions, but I'm gonna go ahead and tweak some of these options, just the ones we need to make this tutorial work. So you have the option that the Profile Builder loads own CSS in the front end. I'm gonna turn that one off. I'm gonna keep email confirmation, roles editor, both at no. Then I'm gonna scroll down, allow users to log in with username and email. I'm gonna keep that as it is. I'm gonna make the password length eight characters and set it to strong, because we don't want people to use weak passwords like the numbers one through eight might be a common password that's used if, you're, if you require eight characters, and that's easily hacked. So you don't want these user accounts to be easily hacked. So we set that to strong, and then WordPress will impose certain requirements on the password. Click on Save Changes. The Admin Bar tab allows us to set the Admin Bar, which is the bar you see at the top on a front end page, like right here, this is the Admin Bar up here. You can have that on or off depending on what user roles are logging in. So if you have subscribers login, that's the most common user role when someone registers to a site, you can have the admin bar off. So they can't ever get to the back end of WordPress. And the subscriber back end is not much, it's just a user profile page and a dashboard page, I believe. It doesn't have all these options you see here because I'm, I'm the admin. But having that bar turned off for people who don't need it leads to a lot less confusion. And contributors, authors, editors, and administrators, they need that bar at the top quite often because they have to do stuff in the back end of WordPress. Otherwise, they wouldn't have these user roles. You can't have an editor not have access to the back end of the site. So I'm gonna keep all of them at the default. For a subscriber, I'm gonna hide it. Click on Save Changes. And before we leave this tab, I also wanna say that I have a tutorial that shows you how to hide the admin bar without using a plugin. 
So if you want to do that, it's in the card up above. There's a link in the description down below as well. And maybe there's a site where you don't want to have a custom login page, so you wouldn't be using the profile builder, but you do want to hide the admin bar. That'd be a great tutorial to check out if you want to do that. The content restriction tab allows you to restrict content similar to a membership site. We're not going to set any of these right now, but basically what happens is if someone comes to a piece of content that's restricted, they see a message, this message right here, you must be logged in to view this content or whatever you type in this box, then they log in and then they'll be able to see the content. Private website allows you to make the entire website private. If you want your website totally hidden, you only want maybe your staff, maybe it's an employee portal or something, and you want people to log in through some secret login and have everything else hidden, this is the place to turn that on. Now before we carry on, an important setting that is required to have registration pages is you have to allow registrations on your site. This option is not on by default. If you go to settings and then general, we have this option right here, membership, anyone can register. You have to check that box to enable the registration page. And the new user default role is the user role someone will have when they register through the registration page. And pretty much for every use case, you want to make sure this is the user role with the lowest or the least number of permissions in WordPress, which is subscriber. Click on there. I have a tutorial on creating custom user roles and custom permission setups for those new user roles. It's in the card up above and the description down below if you want to check that out. I'm going to click on save changes just to make sure we have those membership changes saved. So now that we have that saved, let's start editing these pages. So to create a custom login page, let's go to pages, all pages, and we see the login page. It's this one right here. I have a second login page, which I created originally to create this menu. So that's not the login page that the plugin created. A little confusing. In my demo example here, your, your site setup would be a little different. So the login page, this one here, and then this registration page, and then this edit profile page are the ones that the plugin added. Those are the ones we're going to customize. So let's go to edit the login page. So here's a short code that generates the login page. Super simple. I'm just going to copy this short code, click on edit with Elementor, and it's actually input right here as well, which is pretty handy. And I'm going to change the page layout under settings to canvas because I don't want anything else on the page besides our login page. And the login page is generated with this short code right here. I'm going to make this section, I'm going to click on the six dots, I'm going to make this section full height, fit to screen. So whatever the screen size is someone's coming in with, it just fits it to the screen right here. And now we actually have a super basic login page already done. If we preview this right now, it's just going to say I'm already logged in. But when I'm not logged in, this would show a login page. But I want to customize it a little bit. I want to add an image up above this login page. So let's add an image really quick. This customization won't take long. Let's choose an image from the media library. This is the logo from the front end of the site. Let's just add a box shadow to the whole column. We're going to style, border, box shadow, something super simple. Let's give it a border radius. So it's rounded corners. And then let's click on update to make sure our work is saved. If we don't save our work along the way, if something happens, we lose our work, have to go back and redo it. That's not a lot of fun. Let's make sure we center this login form by going to horizontal align center. And I want to shrink it a little bit. Currently, it's much too wide for a form. Let's go to the section settings, content width. Let's make it, let's make it 540, like a wild guess. If this ends up wrapping some of our text on the form, we'll fix it. But I think this should be okay. I want to reduce the size of our image by just going to the image settings and reducing it to maybe that big. There we go. Let's click on update again and let's exit the builder. I think we've got it done a pretty good job and it might be just what we need. Let's go to view page, show this is logged in, but it's centered, the animation pops up. That's all fantastic. Let's open this in a different browser. Let's just open Firefox, paste it in there. And boom, there we go. There's our new custom made login form. Obviously you can do some more to customize it, but I think this looks pretty good. Adding some more padding on the top and the sides make it much nicer, but that's a pretty darn good start. So now we can add this link to our menu system. If we go back into our menus, let's go to appearance and menus. For login link, let's paste in our custom link, save. Now if we come back to our home page and we click on the login link up in the menu, it takes us to our custom built login page, which is fantastic. Now let's do the same thing for the register page. 
we're going to make this easy on ourselves by opening up what we just worked on, the login page. We're going to copy the whole section. Let's exit back out of here. Let's go to all pages again. Let's go to the registration page. Click on edit. Remember what the shortcode is? Maybe we can copy it. This must be a different clipboard. Let's try copying that. Edit with Elementor. I want to paste in the section. So there's our, our login menu that we used. There's our custom login that we just created. Let's delete this section, change the template to be canvas, the page layout to be canvas. Let's just replace the shortcode with this one that we just pasted, or just copied, I mean. Let's update and see how that looks right out of the box. Without much work, I think we may have just created a good looking registration page. And there it is. There's a whole lot of fields, as you can see. And we have a problem with the fit to screen. Our box or our registration page is a little too high. So let's go back, edit with Elementor again. Changes from fit to screen to be default. And let's just add some padding at the top. Or margin, let's make it margin. Let's add oh, about that much, just ballpark it. Save that, refresh out here. There, that's a bit better. Let's add some padding at the bottom too, so we're not scrunched up at the bottom. Let's just click on the chain again, make that 62 in the bottom as well. Refresh. There we go, good looking registration page. Now you might be wondering, where are all these fields coming from? And why is this text white? Well, this text white, well this text is white because of an asterisk setting that I set. So I'll show you how to change that inside the Astra theme. It'll be different depending on what theme you're using. So you might, might not be affected by this. But what's more important is the fields that are on here. Where do we change those? Where do we set which ones are required? Things like that. To do that, let's exit back out of here. Exit to dashboard. And let's go to profile builder, form fields. Boom. Here are all the forms or all the fields I mean that you see on this registration page. If you want to add a new field, click on this drop down right here. Pick the type of field you want to add. There's a lot of options. Let's just do uh, about yourself. We got a description here, add a field title. About yourself. Tell us about yourself. The field heading or the field type, never mind, just keep that as it is. Add field. Boom, we have it in there. We can drag and drop it by hovering over the number and just drop it to wherever we want it. And then we want to edit any of these. We can click on edit and change the field settings, make them required, not required, default values, things like that. You can build pretty much anything you want to for the registration form. And what's nice about this, you don't need a plugin like BuddyPress to make this work. You can do this right with this profile builder plugin, super simple. So we should add this link to our menu system as well. Let's copy that URL. Let's go to menus. Now let's go to the register page, paste that in there and save. Now, what we also want to check out is how do people edit their profiles? We don't want them coming to the back end of WordPress. We want them to be able to edit their profiles on the front end. Luckily, we are given those options on the edit profile page. Let's click on edit profile. Short code is right here. Let's copy that. Click on edit with Elementor. I'm not going to use the same login form or registration form design that we had a moment ago because it doesn't really work for a page like this, I don't think. I'm just going to add some space at the top. Let's just add 50, top and bottom, actually. Click on update. Let's see how this looks. Let's view the page. And here, they can edit their info. So when they register, this is the registration page, all these fields map to their profile fields. And they can change the information that they want to change in here. We're the admin, so we can edit whoever we want. We can search for users. Currently, I'm the only user. But if you had more users, we could search for them and edit what needs to be edited. 
but the actual users to your site who sign up through the registration form, they would only be able to edit their own profile, not everybody else's. And this could be in your menu system as well, if you wanted it, at a profile page or on the footer or somewhere where you think is appropriate. And so this makes it so people don't have to go on the back end. Another awesome thing about this plugin is if you make an error logging in, so let's just make something up here. Let's say Bob is my username and this is my password. And that's wrong. Click on login. We come back to this login form, whereas other login form creators, even the Elementor login form element with Elementor Pro, if they make an error, it redirects them to the real login page, to the WordPress default login page. And you don't really want that because that ruins your flow. You made this cool custom login page or registration page, and you don't want them directed to the WordPress ones. Unfortunately, other plugins do redirect them to the WordPress ones. This one does not, which is great. Another thing you'll probably want to do is redirect the existing login pages to this one because this one may not redirect to the default WordPress login page, but that default login page still exists. If we go to wp-login.php, we see the default login page right here. And what you want to do is 301 redirect this URL to your new login page. You can do that with a plugin or without a plugin. I'm going to quickly show you how to do it with a plugin. And if you want to do it without a plugin, I've linked to the tutorial in the card up above in the description down below where you can do it without a plugin. I'm just going to do it really quick with a plugin. Let's go to plugins and then add new. Let's look up 301 redirect. Let's use this 301 redirects manager up here. Click on install now and then activate. Then under settings, we have a 301 redirects link that's been added and we add in our redirect. We choose 301. 302 means temporary. 301 means permanent. This is in, in terms of search engines. When they see a 301, it means this URL has been changed forever. 302 means this URL has been changed for a little while, and it's going to go back to the old one at some point. We're going to use 301. I want to change this forever. We're going to paste in the login page. So it says redirect from this page to our new page. Let's make sure we get the right URL. This one right here. Login-2. That's not the best URL. You probably want to change that if you were doing this on a live site. Click on Save Changes. Now we have our redirect in place. Now if I come out to where my Firefox and I refresh this page, it should redirect to our new login form. Let's refresh and there it is. We're to our new login form. So any pages that you want to redirect to a different page, that is how you do it with a simple 301 redirection plugin. And like I said, if you want to do this without a plugin, there's a tutorial down below in the description for that. And that brings us to the end of this video. We have created a custom login page. Let's look at it in Firefox. A custom login page. We've created a custom registration page. Well, I was going to tell you where to do these color changes. And a profile page, which is pretty fantastic. And these color changes for this text, where I did that under Appearance and Customize, under Global, Colors, Base Colors, the text color is currently set to white. If we change that to black, for example, publish this, go back to this page, refresh. Now that is a more appropriate color. And that's in the Astra theme. That'll be different in a different theme. You may not end up having that issue at all. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And next up is watching this video up here where I show you how to speed up WordPress using WP Rocket taking it from, I believe it was five seconds to just one second for a page builder built a website. So check out that tutorial. This tutorial down here is the one that YouTube thinks you should watch. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.